In my previous video, I made this little tag game. However, there was one part of the implementation that I didn't really care for. That video got pretty long, and so I didn't want to address it there, but it gives me an opportunity to do a quick follow-up. So let's take a look at the code. In my tag character, on begin play, I do a little bit of setup here with the materials and get the game mode, and then we set a timer so that five times a second, we check to see if this character is currently it, um, or was the previous it, or was neither of those, and we update the color accordingly. However, we're checking five times a second for something that's happening really seldom. It only happens every couple of seconds of gameplay. So this seems inelegant at best and inefficient at worst. Let's see if there's a better way we could do this. Over in the game mode, this is where we have a custom event called tag that determines if the tag changes who is it and, and then updates the state variables it and previous it. So this is the point at which something interesting happens that it changes. So one thing we could do is have the game mode go out and search the world and keep track of all the different players uh, and set values on each of them separately. However, then we have to build a source code dependency on the character from the game mode. That doesn't seem quite right either. Now, anyone who's well-versed with object-oriented programming should recognize this pattern. I have an agent here who is stateful and when that state changes, I have other agents that want to be notified about that without having a source code dependency from the changing agent to the observing agent. The answer to that pattern is, of course, the observer. So, what we can do is set up an observer like so. We'll create an event dispatcher, and I'll call it on it changed. And this will be a dispatcher that the game mode can call that will notify anybody who's watching for that event. Now, there's a couple of pieces of information we want to send along with this event. Uh, that is, who is it now and who is previously it. So with that selected, we can go over to inputs and say we have the new it, who will be a tag character. And we have the previous it, who is also a tag character. So that's enough that from here we can say call on it changed. Uh, it didn't seem to get the name of that one parameter, so let me just refresh the node. Yeah, save, refresh node. Try again, compile, refresh node. There it is. Okay, good. So we'll send along it, we'll send along the previous it. Good, and that's the only change we need to make here for now. Back over in the character, we can get rid of this polling approach and instead use the event notification. So here's where I have the game mode. And here's where I can say bind to on it changed. Now we'll create a new custom event from here. And I'll call this also on it changed. The names don't have to be the same, but I find it to be convenient. Notice we're getting those two parameters. Uh, so from within the code here, uh, we can get rid of the reference to the game mode and its variables because we now have them coming along with the event. So here's the new it. Here's the previous it, oops, and connect that up. So now, instead of polling five times a second, when the thing we care about happens, we can respond to it. So that sounds good. Let's go ahead and try it. Now if we look around, we see, well, nobody was red to start the game. It turns out somebody was it, uh, it just wasn't showing up. So let's take a look at the game mode, and we can see that on begin play, we're going to look at all the actors out there and set one arbitrary one to be it, um, but the event is never called. So, you know, a reasonable thing to try here would be to say, well, let's call on it changed here and send along the new it. And there's no previous it, so that's okay. And we play, mm, but we see the same thing. Again, nobody's read until the first tag happens. Let's take a closer look. In game mode, it's on begin play that we set the first it. And in our character class, it's on begin play that we start listening to these events. So very likely what's happening is it is being set before the player is watching for the events. Well, that's tricky because now in order to get this to work right in this way, we would need to know the order in which begin play is called. But, you know, I don't know that order. But even if I did, I wouldn't want to build that logic into a dependency in my blueprint. That just seems like it would be a mess. 
For the sake of this example, I think the simplest approach is just going to be to say, let's stick in a little delay here. Uh, this will be an almost imperceptible delay. In fact, it probably is imperceptible. Um, so that these guys have a chance to start listening to the events before this first event is called. And there we go. We see somebody starting out as it. That's perfect. Now, if this were a real game, we'd probably do something like a menu screen or a, you know, a 3, 2, 1 start, this sort of a thing. Uh, and we can use that timing to control who is it and the sequence of when we do the bindings. Um, the most important part for this video is this idea that my agent that changes state, that is stateful, can declare an event dispatcher, and my agents who care about that can bind events to it. If you find yourself in a situation where there's a point at which you don't care about these events anymore, there's also a corresponding unbind event node that you can use. Well, I hope that's helpful to you. Good luck and happy programming!